What's going on, guys? It's Fantasy Stock Exchange here, and today we're bringing you a super flex rookie draft we're currently doing with our Discord members. If you guys aren't already in the Discord, join the link down below. But today, typical 12 team super flex, no tight end premium type of mock. We've talked about super flex for a while now, just released our rankings. Let's see how much you guys can really adapt to what we've said and use your own information. Kind of see how this goes. But with that being said, Corey, how are you doing today? Yeah, as Danny mentioned, we're doing a Superflex mock draft with the uh, Discord subscribers right now. Tomorrow, we will be bringing you guys a video that is just me and Danny doing a mock draft, a, a one quarterback one. We figured we'd do the Superflex one because we talk about Superflex all the time with, with you guys. And then we'll do the one quarterback one um, for more of the casual players that might be tuning into our channel for the first time. We haven't talked about one quarterback a lot, so we figured we'd do that one with just us two where we can you know, uh, give more of our opinions on how we see a one quarterback draft shaking out. Cause I know not everybody plays in super flex like me and Danny. Yeah, 100%. So with that being said, we're going to hit the intro on y'all. And then after the intro, we're going to be hitting this up. So I'm going to quickly randomize the order. So let me just see draft order, hit that little randomized teams, and then we're going to begin this draft, begin this bad boy. So you're actually at the 101, and you can basically show what we've been talking about really all, ever since Trey Lance was made a 49er. <laughs> yeah, so we, we've been talking – I mean, you guys are going to see uh, yesterday we released a video talking about our quarterback rankings, and I gave the entire spiel on there being like why I want – Trey Lance 101, and and the simple answer is because he has Brandon Ayuk and because he has George Kittle and because he has Debo Samuel and Kyle Shanahan calling plays and Trent Williams and Mike McGlinchey as his bookend tackles, a stable franchise around him. I just believe a lot more in the situation than I do for Trevor Lawrence, who has a lot more question marks about his situation, to say the least. And Trey Lance, if he screws up in this situation, like it's all on him. He's basically... He's basically in the situation that Clyde Edwards-Hilaire was last year from a quarterback perspective, but I think Trey Lance is a more talented prospect than Clyde Edwards-Hilaire was. Yeah, no, I fully agree. And with that being said, Lawrence was the 102. Pretty standard. Um, yeah, another great pick, and he's going to be the 101 across the industry. We just prefer Trey Lance, as you guys would have saw in our quarterbacks rankings video that when you're watching this would have been out the day before. So, uh, yeah, we'll see where Sooth uh, Slayer goes here at the 103, if he's going to go with the quarterback, if he's going to take Najee Harris. His time's up. Who's he take here? Jamar Chase. Wow. Okay. So with that being said, I'm at the 104 here. And it would really come down to Harris versus Fields here. Because I don't know what my team would be going into this. I just want to talk about my RB1 a little bit more. I'm going to talk about Najee Harris. I mean, dude's an absolute freak. The best non-quarterback, in my opinion, uh, in this entire class. Lands in the perfect spot. So I'll take him here any day of the week at the 104. And Dunny jumps at that uh, Justin Fields pick at the 105. I think there's really good value on him. Yeah, and so, we uh, see Kyle Pitts go 106. No, uh, yeah. no complaints there. I think 106, probably 105 is maybe like the earliest I would take a guy like Kyle Pitts. There's kind of – the way I see it, there's a big tier for me <laughs> in uh, the tier two. I have a tier two of Zach Wilson, Travis Etienne, Justin Fields, Jamar Chase, and Kyle Pitts. So that's like a big tier within itself. And, I mean, we don't have rosters to necessarily um, – uh, consult right now, knowing what our team needs are or whatever. Maybe we have three solid quarterbacks already on our roster. We're deep at wide receivers. So we could go with a guy like Kyle Pitts instead of a Jamar chase or instead of a uh, Zach Wilson or a Justin Fields. So we see ETN go at the one Oh seven to me. That's fantastic value. He's currently ranked as my one Oh five. So um, I think getting him at one Oh seven is pretty solid. And see Mac Jones goes off wow. the board before Zach, Over Wilson. Zach Wilson. Yeah. Um, I personally wouldn't do it, but I mean, if somebody values Mac Jones in that way, get your guy, I guess. I know I, I personally would not take him at the 108, but I can see people uh, talking themselves into him there. Yeah, uh, yeah, it doesn't shock me. And at the 109, if you can get Zach Wilson yeah. at the 109, to me, that's just tremendous value. And I have a feeling you're going to be able to even get him later than that in some leagues because – you know, some people just believe that the Jets organization are always going to be the Jets organization. And to me, I think they're going in the right direction. I touched on that in uh, the quarterbacks video yesterday. I went in depth. If you want to check that out, we see a run of skill positions here. We got Javante Williams going off the board at the 110. 
to me is one of the best values in rookie drafts right now. Easily. To be honest, I really just like the first <laughs> round as a whole. I like kind of where everybody went, <laughs> to be honest. So except Javon for maybe Williams. Mac Jones, except for maybe Mac Jones value there over Zach Wilson. Apart from that, like that's a typical first round here. And you have three seconds to make your pick. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take Rashad Bateman then. Good value. Yeah. Because I, I've already talked about why I like Rashad Bateman so much. I talked about the fact that with, from a long-term perspective, he's attached to one of the better quarterbacks in the league, depending on what you think of Lamar Jackson. He's still a former MVP caliber quarterback. It's a great franchise. It's a great co- like the coaching staff sounds like they're going to um, adapt to what Rashad Bateman and Tylen Wallace and some of the other additions that they made can bring to the table and become a more balanced attack. According to what Greg Roman said about um, their draft class, I seriously think they're going to become a bit more of a balanced offense and pass the ball probably closer to 500 times than in the like early 400s that they have been the past couple of years. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree. So uh, with that being said, uh, we see Kadarius Tony and Elijah Moore. Oh my God, I'm, I'm sick. Yeah, that hurts. <laughs> Uh, that's a classic uh, of mine. So now these next two picks would are uh, the next two players in this pick would come down to between uh, Michael Carter and Deami Brown. I currently have Michael Carter one spot higher, so I'm just going to take him. But those two are easily in that next tier of early to mid second rounders, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. We we've already talked about why Carter's such a great fit. We're not completely gung ho on Michael Carter. Like I've seen some people rank him RB2. as high as their RB two yeah. as their RB three or something like that, and use a first round pick on Michael Carter. <laughs> we're not quite there yet. We're, we're more in the camp that Michael Carter is set to compete for the job this year, but he could very well be replaced next year if he isn't uh, able to get out to a hot start. And, and everybody is just kind of focused on projecting the, the most optimal situation for a guy like Michael Carter, right? They see the guy that has all the opportunity in front of him, but they don't take into account what if he gets out to a slow start because he doesn't have a big commitment from the coaching staff from the front office with a fourth round pick. Maybe they valued him higher than that, but we, we're never going to know what a coaching staff is thinking. So we got to err on the side of draft capital being the level of investment that a, a front office has in a player. 100%. And yeah, you you hit the nail on the head there. The one I'm surprised about right now is Diami Brown getting passed over by all these receivers right now. <clears throat> so if uh, Korg is able to get Diami Brown here at the 209, I, I would probably say that's the steal of the draft so far. Yeah, I think with Dwayne Eskridge, I'm not really sure what the upside is, right? Like maybe he's the replacement to Tyler Lockett at best, right? But like, I don't think Tyler Lockett's slowing down. Like he just got extended, I believe it was last year, right? So he's probably under contract for the next two years, if I had to guess. So to me, Dwayne Eskridge was more of a a depth add for the Seahawks offense, more of a, they're probably going to use him on special teams a lot. He'll be their third receiver. They lost David Moore, so he might be involved, but this is still probably a run heavy offense that... Like, how valuable is the third wide receiver behind DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, right? Like, to me, he just seems like he's capped at, like, wide receiver three um, flex-type value. Like, at like, could he give you, like, Marquise Brown-type output at his best? I, like, I think maybe that, wide receiver 36 or so, which is what Marquise Brown was last year. But the ceiling just isn't really there for me uh, in terms of that situation that he's currently in. So, we see Murdoch timeout. Uh, he ends up getting Fryermuth at the end of the second round. I think that's probably appropriate value on prior around there yeah i'm um, looking at my board right now and according to my board nico collins is actually my highest rated player right now so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with nico collins i i, I was <laughs> caught between him and josh palmer i've talked about kind of um how i like yeah. both of those guys uh what are your thoughts on the last two picks of the second round there with kenny gainwell um, and pat fryermuth i personally am not see, taking kenny gainwell even remotely close no. to that pick and i actually um, think it's a little early for fryermuth as well uh it might be a little early for fryermuth but i think Late second to mid thirds, probably around the range. We'll see him, him and Hunter Long. Uh, but taking either of them, in my opinion, over Nico Collins, I just personally would not do that. Uh, I was actually really hoping Nico Collins fall back to me. Now I'm kind of torn who my next selection is going to be, but I believe it's going to be either Hunter Long or Amari Rogers if uh, either of them fall to me at that pick. Um, but given the uncertainty of Aaron Rodgers, I'll probably lean uh, Hunter Long in that situation. Um so I got currently Hunter Long at 24 in my ranking. So he would be my next highest. And he actually ends up following to me. So I'm actually going to go with Hunter Long if I can follow him. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty solid value in my opinion. That's probably <laughs> about the range where I'm more comfortable taking these tier two tight ends with Fryermuth and with Hunter Long. I think they're both going to take a year to develop for sure. And um, maybe even longer just because of their tight ends. But um, 
I think both guys are set to have pretty decent opportunity after this year in their respective offenses. With uh, with Hubbard and Elijah Mitchell, I think it's a little early on those guys personally. Just because tiny bit, a tiny so, but, bit. I think they're more like mid to late third round picks, just because I think some of the uh, the wide receivers on the board are a little bit more valuable than some of these running backs. And you're probably, if you guys are having a rookie draft anytime soon, you're probably going to see this as well. People that need running backs on their roster are probably just going to reach on running backs that probably don't belong to go very high because. In my opinion, there's a number of receivers that should go b- b- before Mitchell and Hubbard and Ramondre Stevenson, who we've seen go off the board uh, so yeah. far in this round. Like two, two in particular, we just saw Amari Rogers go off. You're looking at Josh Palmer as another one. Even like Amir Smith Marseille, if you want to take a chance on him. I would actually take Kellen fun. Mond over those running backs, too, to be honest. Same. Who and Davis Mills. Ah, and damn Davis it. Mills. Ice up, son. Just sniped me. Um, oh, Talon Wall's still available, too. I don't mind him if he falls to the fourth. Yeah, <laughs> so I got – who is my next highest-rated player? I think I actually have Amir Smith-Marset rated the highest right now, so I'm going to actually go with him. Um, yeah, with with Smith-Marset, you're basically hoping for uh, the third receiver initially for the Minnesota Vikings, but I think he's a guy that can develop into their number two behind Justin Jefferson. One he's a guy that has like a, a deep threat type of skill set. He's kind of like a Deami Brown light if you want to uh, picture a skill set of a player that's in this draft. I think Deami Brown brings a little bit more um, polish and production to the position uh, that, that Smith Marset can play. But if Adam Thielen, who is an aging player is able to kind of um, decline towards the end of his career, we could definitely see a guy like Smith Marset um, kind of fill into that role behind uh, Justin Jefferson. Yep. I fully agree. And my next highest rated player here is actually going to be Tylen Walls. I'll take the chance on him. I had an early third on him, ended up falling to the fourth. I know these situations kind of crowded, but we're talking about the fourth round of a rookie draft. I'm just going to bet on the talent at this current point. Yeah, that doesn't shock me. And to be honest, I actually, I never thought I'd say this. I think Kyle Trask is actually a value right now on the board, Yeah, to be honest. Just because. uh, That would be the other one I would consider. Yeah, yeah. Like right now we're looking at guys like, I mean, Cornell Powell and, and stuff like that. Like there's just not a lot of, um, of great options after the uh, the first three rounds. I, what I've noticed this year, what I thought was going to be a very uh, deep like third and fourth round of rookie drafts is not going to be uh, the way that I thought. I think the the talent really is going to dry up by the you know mid to late third round once the three quarterbacks are off the board, once probably the next two tight ends are off the board, and uh, most of the receivers are off the board. I, there's just I I just would rather not have a fourth round pick. So if you have anybody that is willing to buy fourth round picks or something, I would just sell them for whatever yeah. you can get for them. Just Dude, like, like aging veterans, maybe that <laughs> have a year of value left. I'd rather have like, honestly, I'd rather have a guy like, like if you could like, probably get early over a fourth round pick, to be honest, like, like honestly, like at this current point, even like mid, mid third rounders at this point, like after like Nico Collins up to like, maybe after like Hunter long or so, honestly, like, Josh Palmer's like, the guy that like is the cutoff for me. That's fair. Josh Palmer, like Amir Smith Marset, and my rankings is basically like the 30s. Yeah. Like the early 30s. So those are guys that I'm like, those are like my last straw type of guys for me. Yeah, that's now we're seeing Puka Williams go off the board. That's when you know like the draft is not worth it. Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, if, if you're gonna take a Cincinnati running back, to me, it needs to be the guy that they actually selected yeah. in the draft, which is Chris Evans, who Chris Evans. has a more well-rounded skill set than Puka Williams and you know isn't 170 pounds. Um, that can hold up to a full like NFL workload. So, I mean, we can go over these teams kind of individually um, so that this, uh, the kind of viewers get the full like kind of scope yeah. of what our teams are. So what my team ended up being was I ended up going three receivers. I guess you can't really – we don't have a roster to consult, obviously, but Trey Lance, Rashad Bateman, Nico Collins, and Amir Smith-Marset. I basically just took whoever I had the highest value on. Because in a rookie draft, I like I suppose I could have reached for an Elijah Mitchell or a Chuba Hubbard with my third round pick, or I could have reached for a Michael Carter with my two one. But to me, Rashad Bateman is a top 10, 11 overall player for me in a rookie draft. So I, I'm absolutely comfortable getting my two one. And Corey, uh, you gotta remember what I said in how to dynasty rookie draft. Don't take a guy because he fits a position. Take a guy because he's the best overall player. Cause let's be honest here, your dynasty rookie draft, if you're using that as a way of filling your needs, you're doing fantasy football wrong. Dynasty rookie drafts should be taking the best overall talents. If you need something in general, that should always be addressed via trade, in my opinion. And, um, or in tier breaks. I, I do yes. agree with it with tier breaks. So if you have, for example, like I mentioned uh, earlier in the video, my top 
uh, my second tier of players has Zach Wilson, Travis Etienne, Justin Fields, Jamar Chase, and Kyle Pitts in it, which covers all four of the major fantasy positions. So yes. I don't mind taking Kyle Pitts over Zach Wilson because even though Zach Wilson's my fourth overall player and Kyle Pitts is my eighth overall player, yeah. if, you, if you don't need a quarterback and you really need a tight end, it's within the same tier. So it's okay. So you yeah. always use tier-based drafting when it comes yeah. to rookie drafts to determine value. But if you have, for example, in my case, I had Rashad Bateman on the board who was a tier three player for me when I could have gone with Michael Carter, who was a tier four player for me, but I'm going to take Rashad Bateman because he's exactly. a tier above Michael Carter, in my opinion. 100%. So I really like what you did there. I think you got value on really all of your picks, to be honest, like Nico Collins is a very intriguing middle of the rookie draft type projection. He should have a clear role with the Houston Texans. Hopefully if Deshaun Watson plays, I mean, this guy can end up developing maybe even into their wide receiver two as soon as this year, like after Brandon cooks with Will Fuller gone, it's pretty bleak what we got over there. That being yeah. said, we can get into the second team. So you see uh, Trevor Lawrence, Kadarius, Tony, Elijah Mitchell, and Brevin Jordan. Lawrence, 102. I, nobody's going to argue that. that. That's proper value on him, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Kadarius, Tony, 202 is interesting. Now, over Elijah Mitchell. I don't hate it. It's a little early for me, but I don't hate it. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it, but I just – I wouldn't do it over Elijah or Michael Carter. But, like, you can convince me, Tony, against even, like, this middle range, apart from maybe Deami Brown and – yeah, apart from maybe De'Ami Brown. But aside from that, I mean, if you like your guy, he's got the first round capital. If you're a Tony Believer, you're probably going to have him higher ranked than I do anyways. Just take him there, I guess. Um, so we got Sooth Slayer here. He ends up going with Chase, Moore, Hubbard, and Davis Mills. What are your thoughts on Chase at 103 ahead of Harris, Fields, and those other guys? Um, so to me, it is a tier break. I, I wouldn't pick Chase that high. Uh, the highest I'd be willing to pick Jamar Chase is four. Uh, it's four oh. for me because he is currently rated as my 107. But like I said, he's in that tier two. So if you if you wanted that superstar caliber receiver, the earliest I would pick him is 104 in a super flex half because I would not pass on the top two quarterbacks or Najee Harris for a guy like Jamar Chase just because Najee Harris to me is is pretty much as safe as they come from a volume projection. Yes. Plus, we all know the talent is is tremendous and the landing spot should improve over the next couple of years. So to me, I wouldn't have picked ahead of him, uh, picked him ahead of Najee Harris. But if you have the 104 and you want to pick Jamar Chase, I, I don't hate it. Yeah, uh, and then you look at the 203, Elijah Moore, slam dunk pick in slam my dunk. opinion. Yeah. He, he, I currently have him actually ranked in my uh, – oh, sorry, he's not in my first round. He's 13th overall, so he's my 201 ranked player. Ended up moving Mac Jones to the end of the first round simply because of the quarterback and because we know what we're going to get from him. But Elijah Moore is an absolute stud. So getting him here at the 203, in my opinion, even after like Tony there, like you can't go wrong whatsoever. And you get Chuba Hubbard at the 303. Maybe a bit early for him, but if you have Christian McCaffrey, yeah, if you're a Christian McCaffrey or, owner, I don't hate taking him yeah. in the, the earlier part of the third round. I think when you look at the pick value overall, if you want to show the entire board um, in general, I think the the range of the draft you want to be picking. Let's say you guys have like a bunch of third round picks and a bunch of fourth round picks in this draft. If you can try and package some of those and get up into the top thirty or so. I think yeah. that's where the tier break is, probably about the middle to late third round. If you're picking anywhere before that, I really like the the back end of the second round type of uh, value that you can get on a guy like Deami Brown or on guys like potentially Trey Sermon if he falls there, Nico Collins, um, yeah. and some of the other guys. I don't, I don't hate taking Josh Palmer at the early part of the third round that's as well. So, yeah, like I, I think that range of the draft is really the value uh, point. And I think after the the 30th, 32nd overall pick or so is when the value really, really drops down. So if you have a bunch of late third, early fourth round picks, try packaging a bunch of them and seeing if you can get a second out of someone. Yep. No, I fully agree. And uh, let's just uh, talk quickly about the Davis Mills pick at 403. I think that's a slam dunk in my opinion. If Deshaun Watson misses any time, any time at all this year, you're easily flipping him for at least a third. At least a third. Even if he's just Tyrod's backup, at least a third if Watson misses time. This is a pick in the fourth round where if you miss out, hey, it's a fourth round pick. But chances are he's with the third round draft capital. Even if he doesn't start or even play this year, he's still going to appreciate in value going into next year given the fact that Watson's always going to be the subject of rumors. You cannot go wrong in taking a guy like Davis Mills at the 403 there. I think that's a slam dunk. Yeah, and I talked about his ceiling kind of being like a Drew Locke type of value play because yeah. at one point, Drew Locke was, what, a top 25 quarterback in Dynasty mm-hmm. last year? So 
what could you have traded Drew Locke for? A, a mid second round pick? Mid second, like, easily. Yeah, like, yeah. That, that's a that's a big time value upgrade on Davis Mills. So yeah, I think if you're at the late points of the third round, early points of the fourth round, any of the three quarterbacks, whether it's Trask, Mond, or Davis Mills, I think are worth that pick. 100%. So then now we can look at my team a little bit. Got the Najee at the 104. Really those two uh, considerations for me at that pick would have been Najee and Justin Fields. Wound up with Najee, my RB1 in the class. 204 there with Elijah Morgan sniped. I think Michael Carter and uh, where is he? Deami Brown were kind of like the next two uh, t- players in that tier. I wound up going with Michael Carter, but I think Deami Brown is more than worth that pick as well. Uh, Hunter Long, 304. Mike, just, uh, sorry, Mike Jasicki, one-year deal. Tua Tunga Lobo is still a young quarterback. We could see a tough, uh, potential rapport there uh, between Tua and the, this year's third round pick in Hunter Long. And finally, H- Tyler Wallace in the fourth round. I mean, the draft capital isn't really indicative of what I saw, but I mean, you still got to respect it. That's the reason why he's falling to the fourth round. But at this point, I'm going to take the chance on the guy who I thought was much better than that. Maybe the medicals weren't really there. Maybe he goes into camp. They kind of clear everything up. I don't know. But in the fourth round, heck, I'm going to take this dart throw a hundred times of a hundred for sure. And uh, let's just run over some of the other teams yeah. here quick and see kind of what picks we liked, what picks we don't. Justin Fields at the one Oh five, definitely appropriate value there. Rondo Moore at the two Oh five Ramondre Stevenson, a little bit early for him, but we're, yeah. we're already hearing reports that Sony Michelle may be a cut candidate. So if that were to happen, Ramondre Stevenson, I don't mind taking as a third round pick because I think he's actually worth that. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't even know who his fourth round pick is. Dude, he got Jerry Rice, man. Yeah, is that Jerry Rice? Like, who is that? It uh, it auto picked him, but still, let's just uh, say he got Jerry Rice and he's got the best draft in the in, out of everyone. So there you go. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, Kyle Pitts one hundred six, good value on him. Terrace Marshall two hundred six. Terrace Marshall might be one of the best values in all yep. of rookie drafts Agreed. because I think a lot of people are going to look at Terrace Marshall <clears> the way <throat> that they looked at. I'm trying to think of who is like the last receiver that had a big time like CD, not, not CD Lamb, but. You know how everybody viewed CeeDee Lamb as like, oh, he's part of like a, a loaded receiver core. How much work is he going to get? I think that kind of same stigma is around Terrace Marshall as well. So I, I, I'm pretty sure at, at some point Terrace Marshall is going to clear those those concerns with his play, either good or bad. So if you're willing to bet on the talent, I think by his second year, he could absolutely be the number two receiver in that offense. Yep. And Robbie Anderson's only signed for this year. He's not signed the year on. So after that, I mean, Terrace Marshall wheels up because I do think he embodies that typical wide receiver two type mold that we both saw. And we saw how valuable Robbie Anderson was, too. If he's able to take over that role and potentially even add more talent to that role, too, um, we could definitely see Terrace Marshall make a big impact for that offense. And by then, they might have uh, Sam Darnold playing really well, or they could have like a Spencer Rattler or Sam Howell or whoever they take in the next draft if that's the direction they go. Absolutely. So with that being said, we got Mipe. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole name, but uh, <laughs> um, ETN at the 107, good value. We already talked about it in the draft. I, I think that's very appropriate. People are going to panic. People are going to hype out James Robinson. I'm going to go with the guy who's just taken 25th overall. So uh, yeah, I'm honestly saying Brown over Diami is pretty interesting. But I mean, it's still, I, I think 207 is still appropriate value for mm-hmm. ARSB. Yeah, no, I agree. Because uh, I mean, if he ends up winding up in a starting position i mean there's so many targets available for him it's actually quite silly when you look at their depth chart uh tommy tremble 307 probably a little early probably but he's a late round tight end i'm willing to gamble on so i don't hate it yeah i mean i wouldn't take him over like mond or the other quarterbacks but if you want to take a chance on a guy who could have a decent role in that offense a good athletic option i'm fine with it i don't even know who his fourth round pick is so we can just move on yeah um mac jones over zach wilson and javante williams or even Devonta Smith too. Like I, I can't do yeah, it. I can't, I can't get behind that. I think Mac Jones is firmly a tier behind those guys. Um, I actually, I believe I have him in the same tier as Devonte Smith. I do, but like, it, he's like really teetering on the tier four with Jalen Waddle, Elijah Moore, Deami Brown, and Michael Carter for me. Whereas I have Mac Jones currently in the same tier as Rashad Bateman, Javante Williams, and Devonte Smith. I may have to rethink that. I might move him down just a touch because I do think I would take those three skill position players pretty much every time over Mac Jones, just because I think Devontae Smith, Javante Williams, and Rashad Bateman have what it takes to become very, very good options at their respective positions. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree. And uh, I do think Mac Jones is a safe QB 2-3 for the foreseeable future, but the upside there of a guy in Zach, William, or Zach Wilson, Javante Williams, Devonta Smith, and you even mentioned like Jalen Waddle, like I would probably move Mac Jones back here and move everybody else up one spot. Dwayne Eskridge over Deami Brown's a little questionable too. 24 years old. Don't know about the fit in the Seahawks offense as their wide receiver three, but 
Maybe he's, he's a Seahawks fan because he took Tamori and Terry as well. Um, yeah. I actually like honestly would just rather have Tamori and Terry than Dwayne Eskridge. I thought he was a much better prospect. Obviously, I got to respect the fact that they took the guy with a second round pick uh, in Dwayne Eskridge when they only had, I believe it was three draft picks total in the entire draft class. And they decided yeah. to spend one on like a 24 year old receiver that only produced yeah. for one year. So 20, 24 year old slot receiver from Western Michigan. Yeah. yeah so I, I really like the Kellen Mond pick though at three, yeah, eight, same. I think that's a perfect time to, to take a uh, swing at Kellen Mond. I would honestly, I actually considered him with my three, one. So with, with Kellen Mond, he's a guy that I think could get on the field a lot sooner than people think. I know everybody, like likes Kirk Cousins, like is neutral about Kirk Cousins, but Kirk Cousins might have less belief from the organization than we think if they're taking a quarterback in the early third round. Yep, I agree with that. Uh, looking at Cork's team, Zach Wilson Love slam it. dunk at the 109, like an absolute freaking steal. We talked Same about him in the quarterback round. Yeah, like, oh my God, those two picks in particular, like after that, it lets down, but let's be honest here. If you bang your first two picks like that, I don't give a crap. I don't, about I don't, hate, I don't hate the Seth Williams pick either. I would have picked Josh Palmer Over there, Palmer, but I don't yeah. hate the Seth Williams pick. Yeah, it's just over Palmer that I have a problem with. But even if, yeah. like, let me bang the rookie. Okay, that was a weird wording. But let me uh, absolutely knock out the first and second picks in my rookie draft and do bad on my third and fourth any day of the week. Because quite frankly, these two people are going to be difference makers on your roster. Yeah. Nobody really in this range is going to end up being anything more than a depth yeah. guy for you. There's probably like, if you looked at it historically, it's probably like a 15 to 20% hit rate on third. Maybe not even like, so, and like over the course of the whole draft. Like there's probably, yeah. there's probably within those 24 players, there's probably like three, maybe four that work out from a fantasy perspective. Probably only one that actually hits big. Yep. No, I fully agree. Uh, Iceps team, you got Javante Williams, 110. Good value on him. Trey Sermon, 210. This is an appropriate I really like this team. It's not yeah. like Puka Williams, 410, whatever. It's the 410. But uh, 410. the first three picks, I absolutely love. Yep, I agree with that. And, I mean, like we are talking about the industry. You might have Sermon as a late first, early second. That value, I'm out on him. But if you're able to get him at the 210, yeah, I fully agree with that. Take I, I think anywhere time. slotted in between those receivers, that big tier of receivers with Rondo Moore, Terrace Marshall, and Monroe St. Brown, Deami Brown, if you're slotting Terrace or uh, Trey Sermon anywhere in between there, if he's like a, a 205 to 208 pick, that's exactly where I'm I'm comfortable taking him. But if he creeps up to the 201, 202, 203, then I'm a little bit out on him because I'd rather have guys like Rashad Bateman and Jalen Waddle and um, some of the other, like Elijah Moore and um, Michael Carter over him. Yeah, like for reference, he's currently my... He's currently my 208. So you got him two picks at value there and the only one... Yeah, I mean, like, you take the Astridge out, you take, who is it, a Monroe out, or no, Tony out, and boom, like, he's right there for me. So I do like that value on him. Uh, we got L. Kearns here, Devonta Smith at the 111. Like it, really good value there. Kenneth Gainwell at the 211. Very risky for a guy, in my opinion, is probably nothing more than a real Boston Scott type presence on that team, in all honesty. I like the talent, but fifth round draft capital, landing behind Miles Sanders in a dysfunctional organization, I don't like that. Yeah, Daz, the lot of the, picks I don't mind. They're they're yeah, somewhat saw, upside saw I would say Daz Newsom has a chance to get on the field early if they move yep. Anthony Miller, if they cut Anthony Miller. There's a chance that he gets on the field early. And then Des Fitzpatrick, I, to be honest, I don't know a lot about him, but he was the only wide receiver that Tennessee drafted. And he has a chance to work himself into a real role as a ro uh, result of that. So he's a guy that I might have to look into a bit further, and he might make an appearance on a sleepers video if, uh, if I like what I see. Yep, fully. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up with Murdoch. Waddle, 112, appropriate value in my opinion. I think I actually have him at 11 or 12 right on. Let me just check. I'm at 13, so it's fine so, for me. Yeah. Uh, I have him at 11. So, I mean, that, that's a really good value. So, if you if you balance between us, there you get 12. That's where he went. Pat Fryer, 212. Maybe a tiny bit early considering like Nico Collins is on the board. But aside from that, I think this is the appropriate range, that early – third round type area for these two uh in Firemouth and Hunter Long tight ends. Uh then you got Kylan Hill, three twelve. I actually if you switch your third and fourth round picks, I'd actually like it better, to be honest. Like I'd rather have Cornell Powell over Kylan Hill straight up. So if you took him at the three twelve and Kylan Hill at the four twelve, then I actually yeah. would have preferred that. But either way I think it's a pretty solid yeah. draft as well. Yeah. So no no especially after those first two. So with that being said, we can kind of give a brief overview and then head out of here. Yeah. Yeah. So but, uh, if you guys enjoyed that, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. If you want to be a part of some of these uh, mock drafts, be a part of the Discord in general, it's totally free to do so. We don't have, You don't have to subscribe to anything or pay for anything. So just join the uh, link in the description. There's tons of football discussion going on in 24 hours a day pretty much. So 
uh, it's a really fun community in there. We hope you um, join that uh, to be involved in some situations like the one we got here. Tomorrow we will be coming at you with a one quarterback mock draft. I haven't really decided if me and Danny are going to do it solo, if we're going to do it within the Discord. We're probably going to do it solo so we can give more of our thoughts yeah. on the overall strategy of a one quarterback draft because we have covered Superflex so in-depth over the past couple of months. We figured we'd give some uh, some attention, some love to the one quarterback players. Yep, 100%. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed and check out tomorrow. Peace out.